modernizer. Hands up, who knows what modernizer is? It's good. Hands up, who's used modernizer? Even better. So an elevator pitch. Uh, that's that's modernizer. It's a library. It has a bunch of hooks and methods to help you sort of build the next generation website. So it, it goes through and adds classes to the HTML element. Uh, it also has a DOM API, so you can access uh, methods through there and see if they're supported. So what do I know? Modernizer is awesome. But why? Well, uh, if we go to the source, modernizer.com, for example, that uh, uses modernizer.load. And that uh, is a wrapper for the yep, nope, script loader. I don't know if you've heard of that or not. And basically, you can run a test. Uh, so font face, and it's not a touch device. Then you can load that script. So it's got yep. And you've got a call back, and it just loads typekit. And it's in a try catch. So if it fails, you don't notice any errors or anything. Uh, it also loads Google uh, jQuery from Google CDN. And if that fails, it checks the jQuery global object. If that fails, then it will fall back to a local copy. So it's got that covered. Uh, you can also test media queries. Uh, this tests against the current state of the window. So it's modernizer MQ. Uh, that'll test if the current window is, is uh, no bigger than 400 pixels. Uh, and then you can do if else and work around that. And it uses uh, match media. API, which is in the good browsers. Um, and then it falls back to using another method to detect it in ones that do support it. Uh, if it doesn't support media queries at all, it'll just return false all the time. Uh, you can inject elements and associate some styles with it. Internally, this is how the generated content test works. Uh, so basically, you've got modernizer test styles. Uh, you've got the CSS class you want to do, and you have to target the modernizer ID because it inserts a div with that ID modernizer on it. And then you've got the function to run to do the test. So it passes in the node that is injected, and it's the rule, and you can work with that. Uh, it also exposes prefixes. So uh, if you want to work out what current prefix you need for a property in, in the current environment you're in, you can do modernizer.prefixed, and you can pass in border radius, for example. So if you're in Firefox 3.6, that'll return a prefixed value. If you're in Firefox 4, just have no prefix. Uh, you've also got a few helpers here. You've got the underscore prefixes, which is just an array of uh, CSS3 properties, all the prefixes. So you've got your khtml, you've got your o, you've got your ms, you've got your moz. Uh, same deal with the DOM prefixes. You've got all the, all the ones in there you need. And this leads into the plugin architecture. So all those methods really help for working with this method here. So if there's a feature not in the core, you can then go and add it yourself. So for example, I've got a demo here of uh, generated content. And so you can see the CSS3 part of it. Uh, you can then go in there, add the test. That's the name of the test that's going to happen. So that'll be appended to the HTML element and also be added to Modernizer Global. And then I'm using the test styles uh, method here to inject the style and then do the function and work out if it's supported or not. Uh, if you go on the GitHub repo, there's a feature to text folder. And that's got a whole bunch of uh, plugins that will uh, be better integrated in 2.1 release. And that's what I know. <laughs>